Who rebukes the girl in the poem Amanda by Robin Klein? What is Amanda yearning for in the poem? Freedom to daydream or freedom from constant corrections. In the poem Amanda, will the two differing opinions and wishes come to a compromise or not? Welcome to my classroom. Today we will study an easy, engaging and insightful poem titled Amanda by Robin Klein. Robin Klein is an Australian author who has contributed a lot of captivating stories in the children's and young adult fiction genre. Many of her works were adapted for television in the early 90s. Her poem Amanda is included in the collection Snakes and Ladders: Poems About the Ups and Downs of Life, published in 1985. Now let's read the poem together. Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight, Amanda. There is a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me, a mermaid drifting blissfully. Did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, Amanda? I thought I told you to clean your shoes, Amanda. I am an orphan roaming the street. I pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet. The silence is golden. The freedom is sweet. Don't eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda. Will you please look at me when I'm speaking to you, Amanda? I'm Rapunzel. I have not a care. Life in a tower is tranquil and rare. I'll certainly never let down my bright hair. Stop that sulking at once, Amanda. You're always so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think that I nagged at you, Amanda. Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight, Amanda. There is a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me, a mermaid drifting blissfully. The poem begins with a lack of literary poetic flourish that most readers are used to hearing. It starts with a harsh reprimand and continues to do so till the end of the poem. As a reader, you can quickly gauge that the commands made are by an adult. One key point to remember is that the poet hasn't specified the gender of the adult. So it can be a mother or a father. Now, what is the adult demanding of Amanda? The voice instructs Amanda not to bite her nails, slouch or hunch while sitting. From the beginning of the poem, you can hear and see the authoritative, insensitive phrasing of the sentences. We have heard what the adult had to say to Amanda. Before we study Amanda's point of view, let's see why parenthesis was used or needed in this poem. Robin Klein has added parenthesis in the poem Amanda. Let's know why. In literature, you refer to those brackets as parenthesis. One thing you should notice about parenthesis is that the passage will be grammatically correct even if we remove the parenthesis. The stanzas are grammatically correct and complete, but the poet has added a parenthesis to explain Amanda's point of view. Using parenthesis, Robin Klein has made it quite clear that we are listening to two voices or two points of view. The authoritative one and the other being that of Amanda. Now let's hear what Amanda has to say. While the adult voice commands Amanda to behave in a certain way, Amanda, however, is in a world. She imagines herself as a mermaid, wishing to be free, alone, and drifting aimlessly in the sea. Why is Amanda not listening to the voice that is making demands? Although Amanda is a child, a young adult in this poem, it is a human tendency, irrespective of age, to drift away or to daydream in the middle of something. We daydream or get distracted when we are supposed to do something we are not interested in doing at all. Also, constant reminders and reprimands add to the escapist part of our mind. As children or as an adult, we seek fanciful diversions as a way to distract ourselves from something unpleasant. Here, Amanda likes to daydream about a different reality. Did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, Amanda? I thought I told you to clean your shoes, Amanda. I am an orphan roaming the street. I pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet. The silence is golden. The freedom is sweet. 
The adult asks Amanda to complete her chores. They remind Amanda to finish her assignments on time. She is no longer a mermaid. Her mind has jumped to another fanciful imagination. She says she is an orphan, roaming the street bare feet. She imagines herself as an orphan, idly wandering with freedom in the world. Silence is golden because no one is here to correct her. Why has the poet used the word orphan? When we live in a family with parents or elders, we are expected to follow and live by a few rules and norms. Sometimes parents tend to go overboard, thinking everything is for the child's benefit. But at times, rules can become rigid and an adult's or parent's expectations can become oppressive or suffocating. This rigidity is what is stifling Amanda here. One voice is directing, commanding and demanding. It's not being considerate of the young adult's whims and moods and in return, the more youthful voice is pretending to listen. They are not communicating with each other and ultimately that will lead to possible miscommunication and growing resentment towards each other. She says silence is golden and freedom is sweet, indicating a building resentment in Amanda's heart towards the constant cavilling. She is hoping and counting on finding space and silence, at least in her imagination, if not in her home. Don't eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda. Will you please look at me when I'm speaking to you, Amanda? I am Rapunzel. I have not a care. Life in a tower is tranquil and rare. I'll certainly never let down my bright hair. Stop that sulking at once, Amanda. You're always so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think I nagged at you, Amanda. If we go through the previous stanzas, we'll see the same pattern of imperative sentences. The voice of the parent continues with criticism and ceaseless corrections. Amanda is asked not to eat chocolate as it aggravates her acne. The parent notices her sulking and moodiness and immediately asks her to change her behavior. The reason behind the sulking was not inquired or discovered. Why is Amanda sulking? Let's pretend to be in Amanda's shoes. If you were to be Amanda, won't we fret and be moody if constantly prompted to correct our behavior? Because enforced discipline becomes dreary. One loses interest if something is enforced and repeatedly demanded, especially when we don't give time someone to adjust appropriately or accordingly. Let's take an example. If a chore is given to you to solve and submit 12 mathematics sums, Every day by 6 p.m., based on your liking, you might or might not enjoy doing this task. Some days you would like to study English, play games in your spare time, or just not do anything at all. Now, why do we enjoy spending our time that way? Because it interests us. It is something we like to do. And the schedule has not become rigid. Some flexibility is there. Let's come to the last added parenthesis. This one is the most important. Amanda, in the previous parenthesis, wishes to be Rapunzel. I am taking for granted that all of you are familiar with the story of Rapunzel. If not, read or watch her story for better context. Unlike Rapunzel's fairy tale, Amanda prefers the isolation of the high tower. She finds its silence peaceful and calm. This calmness in a fictional world contrasts with the constant fault-finding world of Amanda's. Amanda adds that this tranquility in the imaginary tower is rare, implying that in reality, probably at home, there are very few rare, tranquil moments in her life. Amanda also adds that in her imaginary world, I have not a care. Please don't get confused over here. Amanda is not saying that she does not care about anything. But in her imaginary world, Amanda doesn't have to worry about anything. In her fictional world, it doesn't matter whether her shoes are on, whether her room is tidy, or whether she is sitting properly. It does not matter here because she is as free as mermaid and as ignorant as Rapunzel in her tower about the real world. Moving on, why there is an emphasis on the word never in the line, 
I'll certainly never let down my bright hair. In the fairy tale Rapunzel, where she lets down her golden hair, she changes her circumstances from being a lonely girl living in solitude to being recognized as the long-lost princess. Being a long-lost princess was her reality and her burden or responsibility. Figuratively speaking, Amanda does not want to let down her golden hair, symbolizing her longing for freedom and retaining her carefree childhood days. Let's move to the analysis of the poem Amanda. Stanza 1, 3, 5 and 7 ends with the repetition of the name Amanda. Parenthesis 2, 4, 6 follow the triplet pattern. See me blissfully, street feed sweet, care rare hair. What is a triplet? A triplet is a particular form of tercet in which each line ends with a rhyming word, giving it an AAA rhyme scheme. Parenthesis 2, 4 and 6 are triplets with AAA, BBB, CCC rhyme schemes in the poem. Now you will ask what is a tercet? A tercet is a unit of three lines of poetry. It can be a poem in itself or occur within a longer poem. A tercet may rhyme, but it does not have to. The literal and the symbolic interpretation of the poem. By the literal interpretation, we can easily surmise that this poem depicts a stage in a child's life that is relatable to everyone. It is the parent's responsibility to correct their child's behavior, but let's not forget that it is very much in the child's nature to, at times, ignore what is asked of them. Now for the symbolic meaning. The poem is hinting towards a clash, a difference, or a juxtaposition of the two opinions, one that of a parent and the other that of a young adult, Amanda. As I said earlier, one is talking and commanding and the other is pretending to listen. Amanda and the parents are not communicating or listening to each other. The poem hints towards an age gap and lack of understanding from either of the individuals towards each other. Amanda is asked to behave and complete her chores on time for a reason, to become a responsible individual. On the other side, the parent also fails to understand the psychology, whims and moods of a young, growing child. Metaphors Mermaid, Orphan, Rapunzel Robin Klein has used metaphors to depict the fanciful imagination of a child who wishes to be anywhere but near her home or close to her parents. She is weaving colourful situations in her mind, all hinting towards non-confinement. It is also fascinating to notice that Amanda unconsciously or consciously has chosen those characters that don't have their parents near them. A mermaid is a folklore creature, a wanderer, so by default she is away from her parents. An orphan has no parents and Rapunzel too never had her parents near her. Let's come to the themes used in the poem. First, expectations versus whims. Here, in this poem, we can see certain expectations are imposed on her and how opposite they are to the whims and fancy of young Amanda. Discipline and restrained behavior are expected from her, but Amanda is a child who wishes to be free and to do what her heart wants. Second, moving from childhood to young adulthood. As we mature, more responsibilities and expectations are added to our young shoulders. Amanda is expected to grow up, but a bit too quickly. Lines, remember your acne, Amanda, and you're always so moody, Amanda, gives the reader a clue that Amanda is no longer a child, but a teenager. A young adult, and hence must learn to fulfill the chores and the responsibilities assigned to her. This poem gives the perspective of the inner thoughts of a child. The poem presents a one-sided perspective, please underline this, and lacks or doesn't have the parent's point of view. Third, rules of conduct for a girl child or gender norms. The poem Amanda is in a way alluding to the gender norms and code of conduct expected from a girl child. She is expected to grow up a bit too quickly and too soon. 
As a reader, we can deduce that Amanda is moving on to the next phase of her life, that is adolescence. Adolescence is a vulnerable time for children as they are susceptible to criticism that are not constructive. Also, frequent criticisms and complaint may cause notable emotional conflict. Acne, moodiness, wool gathering, and slouchiness are typical traits of teens and teenagers. Still, the do's and don'ts of proper behavior and etiquette appear in a girl's life way earlier than in boys. Fourth, obliviousness to individual differences. Again, this is a very important point. Every child grows and matures at a different rate. Some may develop early and some will take their time. Most of the world needs to remember this when dealing with children at various stages, ages and genders. I'll end this explanation with an open-ended question here. Wouldn't it be best if our society starts letting the Amandas of the world grow at their own unique pace? This concludes the explanation of the poem Amanda by Robin Klein. Let me know whether you can relate to this poem. If yes, share it, like and subscribe. Until next time, bye-bye.